what can I possibly give in exchange for the gift of the Son of God? And we give a little thing in Lent, maybe a little extra effort, or maybe we give up something that we enjoy to make the season, season special. But what Christ gave for us is his everything. Right? He gives us his body and blood, soul and divinity every time we come to the Eucharistic table. He gives us entry into heaven itself, right? The vision of heavenly glory that the apostles experienced for just a moment on the mountaintop. It was just a glimpse of Christ's true nature. It was just a glimpse of his heavenly glory. The glorified body after the resurrection, unrecognizable from what it had been in his earthly life. And this little glimpse that they got was enough to carry them through the devastation of the cross. So if Christ gives them this little moment on the mountaintop to bring together all the images of the mountaintop from the Old Testament, all the experiences of God, because that's why you go to the mountain, is to encounter God. And here they do. They encounter Jesus in his divinity for a moment. They really get to see him as he is. And they also get the theophany, God in the cloud, just like Moses on Mount Sinai. Just like that voice that booming voice of God that they feared so much that they said, we never want to see this again. Let Moses go up and talk to you, Lord. This is too much for us. Just like on the mountaintop when the angel restrained the hand of Abraham as he prepared to give his son. And all of those moments come together here and they realize who it is they're dealing with. Then when he gives himself on the cross, Right, John was blessed to be at both of those moments. Remember, Peter and James had fled out of fear. But John was still there. So imagine John at the foot of the cross looking up at Jesus. Just like he looked up at Jesus flanked by Moses and Elijah. Now he looks up at Jesus hanging in pain. And he hears him say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And there are two people there who do know. I suspect Mary knew as well. And John knew. He had seen the divinity of Jesus in that moment on the mountaintop. And so he's looking up at Jesus who had just said to him, this is my body which will be given up for you. This is my blood which will be poured out for the remission of sins. And he remembered that moment when John the Baptist had said, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Now if all of this sounds familiar to you, it's because we say it every Sunday in the Eucharistic prayer. And we stand at the foot of the cross with John and we see the sacrifice. And we stand at the foot of the altar and we receive the gift. So what can I give that equals that? What can we possibly give that could equal that? Can we give God our attention? Can we give him the least bit of our attention? Right, so that when we struggle to make that decision, should I go to mass or not? I'd really like to sleep in on Sunday. Boy, I can tell you as a priest for the last 10 years, there've been a lot of Sundays I wish I could sleep in. And I, I've getting to that age now where I realize my friends not only have kids, some of them have grandkids. I've given up my possible children for this vocation. I never thought about it. I mean, yes, okay, yeah, I understand. I knew what I was getting into. Just let's be clear about that. When I signed up, I knew what came with the life. But to actually see what they have and what I could have had and to say, I'm okay with that. Because he gave everything for me. The least I can do is give him my total dedication, my future. 
and you guys become immortal through your children. I have to be settled for being immortal through you. Right? That means that in my priesthood, I have to show you Christ as fully as your parents showed him to you by the constant self-sacrifice they did to raise you. Right? By the constant giving that you give to your children to raise them, to feed them, to clothe them, to nourish them, mothers with your own bodies. And yet, I wouldn't trade it for the world because I get to be the one who stands at the altar and repeats those words that drive home the depth of the gift that he's given to us. I get to say, this is my body. You say it with your actions. I get to say it with words, with his words. Right, so is it equal for me to give my future, my possible children, grandchildren, my legacy in exchange for being able to stand at his altar? in exchange for the gift of himself that he has given to all of us. Okay, so for you who are raising sons, and when your son or your grandson comes to you and says, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, I'm thinking of being a priest, and you have that selfish thought, I want grandkids. Can you give that up? It's a tough question. Okay, but let's, let's make it less dramatic. Can I give more time to God this week than I do to myself? Okay, think about this. How much time do I give to entertainment versus the time I give to God? Can I give God more time in prayer than I do to myself? Okay, now include in that time you're giving to God the time you give in service to others in his name. How's the balance, right? Can I give God back equal measure, just an earthly equal measure of the time that he's given me? Now, for being fair, he's given us everything, so we should give him all of our time. But can I make that sacrifice beyond just the, the idea of a Lenten sacrifice? My whole life, can I look at him who has said, I will give you heaven in exchange for in exchange for what? In exchange for your sins? Can we give him an honest confession before Easter? Can we give him an honest to the gut, I'm embarrassed to say this, Father, but I should, so that when I die, I know I've said it, and I've heard the words, I absolve you from your sins. Can we give him that? Can we give him the worst secrets we hold in the darkness of our hearts and receive instead the gift of his mercy? Can I, can I just give him a well-prepared reception of his gift? That might be enough. Right? Can I spend the extra time before I go to Holy Mass so that I'm well-prepared mentally, spiritually, physically when I do receive him? And can I give him a little bit of adoration, a little bit of meditation after I've received him, before I rush on to the next thing for me? Can I make holy his day by visiting somebody in his name, picking up the call, picking up the phone and calling somebody who needs to hear his voice. Right? Because God revealed to us on the mountaintop, this is my beloved son. Remember what I asked Abraham to do, but didn't actually make him do it? I did it, right? And he says, this is my beloved son, which I offer now for you. All he asks is that we repent appreciate that gift and then we take to heart the love that it shows us and we let that transform our lives a little bit right whether it's a big way or a small way that we walk away from here in such a way that when people look at us they know what we've seen right? when Peter and James and John came down from the mountain how do you think their eyes looked what do you think the other nine thought when they came back and their eyes were big as saucers Hey guys, what happened? Nothing. <laughs> we can't talk about it yet. When can you talk about it? After the Son of Man rises from the dead. What? Never mind. We'll explain later. If you walked out of Mass with that attitude, with that recognition of the depth of the gift that we've just received, what would happen to the people who saw you? 
Would they be lining up for the 8 o'clock Mass at Butler? Because they couldn't wait another night to get what you just received. After the resurrection, when Peter and James and John received the Eucharist, how do you think they felt? After it all clicked, it all made sense. And what they saw on the mountain and what they saw at the foot of the cross and what they saw in the wounds Jesus showed them after the resurrection all came together. And then he said, now you go and give this to others. You're going to be my priests. How do you think that felt? I bet they cried every time. I bet it was overwhelming. So what can I give in return for such a gift?